Hey everyone. So I've gotten quite a few requests on where I farm, what I do as a Dexer, you know, how I make my gold. And to be honest, as a newer player, I made it mostly in the wilderness to start, mainly because I didn't know what I was doing in dungeons. I get a lot of requests regarding dungeons, so I figured I'd start a series specifically detailing how I handle certain dungeons. And we'll go through each one. I'll make a five, 10 minute video on each one so you guys get a good feel for exactly what to do in these dungeons, what's worth farming, what you're looking for, what mobs to kill in that regard, and then how easy it is. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, to be honest, when I was first watching videos, not everybody had how to get to these locations. So we're going to start off with Aegis Keep. I'm going to go ahead and open my mini map up a little bit here for you to see. So if you're new to the game and have no idea how to get to Aegis Keep, here you go. So you're going to want to head on over to Horseshoe Bay. So you can see the Horseshoe Bay Cemetery marker there, the town of Horseshoe Bay, the healer. Take the Moon Gate. You'll start out somewhere up here, right by the little Moon Gate symbol, run down to the beach, through the town, out the southwest side, actually southeast side, and then up to Aegis Keep. Pretty simple. Might take about a minute for you to get here. It won't take too long. Or if you can use Chivalry, you can gate directly here. If you've got Majory, hit a Ruin Book, whatever works. But if you're new to the game, you likely don't know the layout, and that's how you get here. So we're currently on level one. If you look in the top right of the screen, you can see the level one layout. I'm not going to spend much time here. Uh, it's fairly simple. The difficulty level is about the same as going through a graveyard. Nothing special. You won't make much gold. You won't find it to be too difficult. But if you're extremely new to the game, there is one location on level one that I would recommend farming early on if you're just still trying to skill up. So it's right around the corner here. It's the entrance to level two. Takes about 30 seconds to run there from entering level one of Aegis Keep. The imps are okay, they don't have a ton of HP. The apes, same thing. What, you, what you're really after are the footmen. And look at that, we've got a paragon footman. And I do recommend always killing all the paragons you can just because you get a chest out of it. So we'll go ahead and do that real quick. And then move on down to level two. But if you're new to the game, reasonably you could farm this location they give about 100 gold to 200 gold a piece uh, in terms of footmen apes might be right around the 80 to 100 range it's nothing crazy but if you need gold and you don't have a lot on you it's passable all right well i'm not going to take this back to town because i'm being silly i really should but uh let's go ahead and hit level two All right, so I'll spend a little bit of time here. Level two is a significant jump in difficulty from level one. Uh, the mobs in level one really don't do too many special things. Uh, but on level two, there's transformations. You'll get spellcasters, uh, people that'll generally hit you a little harder, have a little more armor, have a little more health. If you're looking to farm two, the way I just went is an acceptable path. The drakes aren't too hard to kill. And there's also one small secret room uh, it's going to have a lich in it that transforms into a sorcerer and along with a lesser demon. If you can farm most of level 2 already, this isn't a bad little room to go ahead. You'll make about 500 gold on the sorcerer, some regs, maybe some magic items and scrolls. Same thing with the lesser blood demon. I don't find these to be too difficult. If you can take down a drake, you could probably take down a lesser demon. The only thing is in this room here, there's nowhere to run. Now, you could run in and out heal up run back in run out and heal up and get that done it's a common strategy when you're new i recommend doing it pvpers even do it when they're fighting in dungeons to try and get an advantage what i would avoid if you're new are these aegis knights not fun to mess with you knock them off their mount eventually then their horse starts fighting you too and the horses are similar to nightmares they have spell casting abilities and they will wreck you the two of them together if you're a newer player um, if you're an intermediate player I would recommend farming two right about here. The Cyclops uh, are these little guys right here that transform into them. Same with the, the dogs down here, they'll transform as well. Cyclops give about 300 gold on average, maybe mid twos. Uh, they're not too difficult, they have one ability. It'll hit you and knock you back, which it has not done to me yet. Um, but this spot isn't too bad. Just avoid the Aegis Knights. Everything else here in this little zone on level 2 will give you about 200 to 400 gold. 
If you can do those though, you should reasonably be able to do level three, uh, albeit slowly, but okay. So I'm gonna take a little more time explaining three. We're gonna go ahead and run through it first and I'll, I'll detail out the map for you. But this section here is probably the worst spot on the whole map. It's something you farm if you need to. The mobs aren't too difficult. Most everything here transforms. But to give you an example of what I'm talking about, this Chaos Knight, it's going to give about 300 gold. It does a spinny circle AoE attack. You can walk away from it and avoid the hit, so I'll demonstrate that now. So I'm not getting hit. Run back in. Do a couple hits. Let it do its spinny circle AoE of Doom and move on out. But again, the reason why I don't like this spot is the amount of gold you get for what you're doing, I don't really find it to be worth it unless the dungeon itself is incredibly crowded, which does happen during prime time hours, which is about 6 to 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Uh, blood Elementals aren't too bad. They'll give about 400 gold, some regs. There's really nothing special to do with the Blood Elementals, nothing special to do with the Malforms. Uh, the Aegis Asps, I tend to ignore. I don't feel like burning my poison cure potions. Uh, just no reason to burn through them. They give about two to 300 gold if you kill their uh, upgraded form. Uh, this lower level, again, I put it on par with the first section I ran through. I don't really find it to be worth farming. Again, if it's crowded, go for it. Um, but if you have other options, highly recommend the other locations. All right, so now that I've explained the bottom level along with the uh, level I don't really like, we're gonna explain a few more of the mobs. These Stranged and Tombed, they're not too bad, but they do on occasion hit you with some ability if you're standing directly in front of them. that will cause you to bleed and bleed for a lot of damage. I find it happens on one out of every five that I fight. I don't actively look for them. So pretty much everything you see me running by down here outside of the blood elementals, I don't actively try to kill. I don't find the gold to be worth the effort. So avoid three on this and I'm running around showing you the map so you have a good idea of where not to go. Now we start to go north directly coming in from the first entrance on level three. I personally like to run right through. I'll kill the doppelganger here. It's very similar to the blood elemental or the lesser blood demon and then I'll pull this section somewhat carefully I can potentially kill all three things here or all four at the same time I don't like putting myself in that position though um, reds do frequent ages keep thieves are here people will try to wall you and kill you it's not often but if they see an opportunity to do it they'll likely do it so I would recommend killing the chaos knights first going for the blood hunter as well and if you can pull the strange chaos knight Further away, I highly recommend doing that. Reason being is this guy turns into a greater demon. And the greater demons are probably the hardest thing to kill uh, in Aegis Keep. I don't really think anything compares unless you're not able to cure yourself from poison or protect yourself from bleeds. Uh, they're not too difficult. If you're aspect level 3 or 4 as a Dexer, say Earth or Air, you should be able to handle the demons. You might find yourself running away every now and then. They can dump on you with large flame strikes, mind blasts, things of that nature. Uh, if you're a summoner, a necro, a tamer, you're likely going to be able to come down here without an aspect and actually clear everything that's here as long as you pull carefully. I wouldn't recommend pulling more than one thing at a time as a newer player just because everything down here is designed to kill you like every other dungeon. It's not forgiving. But yeah, if you're a summoner, a tamer, a bard, feel free to come down here not even aspect it. I'm not saying you're going to have the easiest time, but you should be able to fight everything that's down here. Alright, so one of my favorite locations is this room here on the left. You want to be careful with this room though, as these lich turn into blood sorcerers, and they will not chase you unless you use LOS, which I prefer to do in these scenarios. Uh, you don't want it to fight it too far up because there are more mobs in this room. It'll spawn two Aegis lich, which turn into two blood sorcerers, and you don't want to rain of blood on you. And then there will also be a greater demon that's spawned in here. Now again, I can potentially handle both of the mobs at the same time. But for the video's sake, I'm going to pull these back and show you how I was doing it as a newer player. I'll get the aggro on me, take a few steps. If I get low, I'll go in LOS, heal up till I'm full health again, then run back in and pull them a little further. I don't feel like fighting the sorcerer and the greater demon at the same time. But these sorcerers aren't too bad. They don't have a ton of health. 
and they give plenty of loot, like the first one I killed earlier on the other side on level two. Uh, it's going to give me about 500 gold, 50 of an individual reg, maybe some gems and scrolls. So 50 garlic, unidentified shield, about 500 gold. The demons themselves, they give about, on average, 900 gold a kill. I think it's 175 of an individual reg. Yeah, I have a high chance of getting magic items from it as well. I'm sure people are going to have questions about my build. I'm a pure dexer. The only thing that you may not consider dexing in the grand scheme of things is chivalry, but what else is it going to go with? So uh, chivalry, magic resist, parry, macing, anatomy, tactics, and I believe I skipped over healing. And I don't have everything at 100. You don't need it. 80 is a, a threshold point. But I'll do another video on that another time where uh, I go in depth a little bit more. All right, so as we progress through the dungeon, there's a couple more spots. We'll start on the right here. In this room that I'm running into now where there's a tamer and it looks like a, a mage and something else, you'll get three spawns. Up here, you'll get a doppelganger spawn, about 400 gold and some regs. Down here, you will get a lesser demon spawn. 75 regs and about five to 600 gold. On the opposite side of this room, you'll have another section where you'll get an Aegis Lich that will turn into a Sorcerer, which we've gone over those a couple times now, about 500 gold and 40 regs. Same safety principle applies. Bloodstorm's coming down on you as a newer player. You may want to run out of the room, get fully healed. If you don't want to run out of the room and you just want to avoid Bloodstorm, all you have to do is take two steps away from the mob. It may even be one, but to be safe, I recommend two until Bloodstorm finishes and then go in and hit him again. If you're a caster, you don't have to worry about it at all as long as you've got pets. So above me, there's three more rooms and right at the top of the screen, I'm not sure if you can see it all too well, right above the status bar is the only moon gate you're gonna find on Aegis level three. If you're newer to this map, new to Aegis, I highly recommend fighting in this general area. Like I said earlier in the video, Reds and Thieves tend to frequent this, and there are some players out there who just want to kill you. Just because. You pull too many mobs, they feel like they can loot you, get your stuff, and move on. Now, as I'm getting full, I don't want to kill everything. I'll leave the mobs to other people. I'll get their gold, their regs, their magic items. But I just want to detail out the gate for you. It's not a far run from the entrance to level 3. It might take you 15 to 20 seconds. And as a general rule of thumb, if you find yourself in a scenario where you can't handle the mobs and there are other people around, let them run ahead of you. They'll get the aggro. All right, so down here, just parallel to the gate, you have the cultists. These cultists turn into dragons. Dragons don't use magic down here, but they will breathe a blood bleed on you. I'm not sure if it ticks you too often or not, but I'm going to be honest, I don't find that they're worth killing. And uh, I'll bring them up for someone else to deal with. And again, that little passageway just goes down to the second area I showed you on level three. It's not worth doing either. Now, a couple places to note that are good farms are this little pathway here. You can clear everything through here without a problem as a newer player up until you get to this part where there will be a demon and a blood elemental. And again, I'd pull things one at a time. You know, use an LOS option, stand around a doorway, tag them, get them to follow you. Make sure it's only one at a time. So this here is the main boss room. You can use this as a way to get from that tunnel we just went through to the golden treasure room. I don't know if that's actually what it's called, but that's what it looks like to me. It's gold, you got treasure. This is a room that I, I would avoid as a newer player. You can absolutely pull things one at a time here, but you'll tend to get more than one thing aggroing on you. But it's a good little farm spot if you get confident with yourself and you're able to handle more than mob one at a time. That pathway just goes underground again. This is a little byway on, on my left here. And then this is the most difficult room in the entire level three of the dungeon. It's just full of demons. I think there are about five demon spawns. They spawn once every three or four minutes and one blood elemental, along with access to the mini boss. Uh, the room right there on the northwest side of the screen. I guess this guy wants the kill. We'll see if he gets it. But that's pretty much it for Aegis 3, guys. There's not much to it. It's not a difficult dungeon to farm by any stretch of the imagination. There are much more difficult ones out there. 
Um, if you're new to the game, I would recommend coming down into Aegis and exploring it for yourself. Maybe do it during prime time when there's a lot of people so that you're not aggroing six, seven mobs everywhere you run like I was earlier. Uh, but you'll find that it's not too difficult at all. And most of these mobs are easily handled solo. Just pull one at a time. Avoid the Entombed, avoid the Asps, and I'd avoid the Nobles just because the gold isn't worth it. And they'll cause you more problems. But that's pretty much it for Aegis 3. Um, feel free to request the next dungeons you guys would like done. Have a good one.